You chose absolutely right tuning into Rwanda Television tonight. A very good evening to you and thank you very much for your company on Rwanda Television News. And as we started off today uh, in, at, at the Holy Land of Achibeho in Nyaruguru District, uh, Christians from all walks of life gathered to celebrate the Assumption Day. Many testify that their prayers to God through uh, the intercession of Mother Mary have been answered, leading to a continuous increase in the number of our pilgrims visiting the area. In Jewish Melodies, local Christians and those from different parts of the world celebrate the Assumption Day. They say the day is an opportunity to present their requests and worries to God. I came here to pray for my country that through Mother Mary, God will grant us peace, especially Ituri, my province, but also my family. When I came here before, I had a problem of school fees for my children. I came and prayed. My children have now graduated. I used to live in a very tiny house. I prayed for a bigger house, and now I have a big house, enough for me and my family. As a student, I come to pray that Mother Mary will help me in my studies. I encourage other young fellows, like those addicted to drugs, to attend such prayers so that they can be delivered. With the increasing number of attendees each year, the Catholic Church has announced plans to expand the Kibeho Holy Site. Through the contributions from Christians, we want to expand the Holy Land. We have so far collected about 300 million Rwandan francs, yet the budget is 3.5 billion Rwandan francs. Our message today was to encourage Christians to contribute. With just 1,000 each, we will be able to complete the activities in a very short time. Assumption Day, observed on August 15, commemorates the belief that Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, was taken into heaven, body and soul, by passing the natural physical process decay. Over 60,000 Catholic believers from around the world gathered at the Kibeho Holy Land in Nyaruguru district to celebrate Assumption Day. Rwanda was ranked among four countries leading in public-private partnership towards development. Experts reiterate that this is why investors are more interested in investing in Rwanda and later the region. Prince Manzi brings us the details. Thank you so much for coming. Visual Spatial Public-Private Partnership Readiness ranked Rwanda as the fourth out of 53 countries inspected, with Egypt leading be followed by Ghana and Namibia. Janine Kaihura, the country manager of Rubis Energy, and the Manuel Nijena, the founder and CEO of BioCell.com, reiterated the public private partnership is a win win situation. In partnership we have with the government, especially as Rubis, we are concerned with health, safety, and environment and the government is stressing on environmental conservation. Rubis is now representing Castro here in and in other African countries except Egypt. Uh, people who work as self-employed, uh, that means, uh, I'll give you an example, if you look, if you want a passport or an ID, you no longer have to go to your uh, local uh, government uh, administration, uh, you can go to the the next uh, person who would provide that service and then you can set, get it in days. Uh, it's in that respect that uh, we're also looking for 2,000 people who are going to help us uh, to connect the buyers and sellers uh, 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 using the technology or leveraging the technology. So uh, effectively, uh, 2,000 uh, consultants who are graduates uh, they are going to uh, obviously provide or they are going to um, uh, provide taxes to the government uh, that is going to be transparency, uh, which means that obviously we both, we, it's a win-win situation. So the government wins, private sector wins, and then those people who are working also are the winners. 
In 2016, Rwanda initiated the law of 35 articles governing public-private partnership. The outcome so far is that products imported in Rwanda are only needed and preferred goods by citizens. Castrol is a really good oil. If you use castrol, it, it gives you uh, longer kilometers, more than what other people offers. If you use castrol, like for example for a diesel car, it never smokes. Most people think that uh, diesel car smokes, but castrol, your car never smokes. Another thing, it gives you better consumption. If your car was uh, consuming high and you switch to castrol, it gets much better. Firstly, I would like like to thank my country for supporting the private sector. The country develops, the entrepreneurs develop, and their families. Entrepreneurs and experienced business personnel reiterated this public-private partnership attract investors in Rwanda as they also aim for the region. The market in Rwanda, I mean, it's a very exciting market. We have been in uh, Rwanda for five years now when we took over Kobil in 2019 and we are very happy with the journey. Not only we are investing massively to rebrand and uh, renovate the gas stations, and I hope the people in Rwanda, they have seen the job we have done, but also we are promoting new uh, and innovative solutions. We launched uh, the Rubis Guard, uh, we launched Ultratech. Uh, now we are launching a fantastic product by the name of Gastrol. We're currently looking at East Africa. So we are currently distributing in Kenya, we're distributing in Uganda, distributing in Tanzania, and now we're announcing our launch in Rwanda. And of course Rwanda is a great market, it's a great country. Um, and through, through our partnership with Rubis Energy Rwanda, the people of Rwanda now have access to our best-in-class uh, lubricants. This report in the case the countries like Egypt, Ghana, Namibia and Rwanda boast mature spatial data infrastructures, robust geospatial capabilities and transparent governance, hence positioning them as strong candidates for impactful public-private partnership projects. Thank you, Prince. Some Rwandan youth have found that pursuing self-employment has significantly improved their standard of living. They are now inspiring their peers to follow the same path by leveraging valuable opportunities. Nora Gladys with the report. Umurirgo Claudette is one of the youth who ventured into self-employment by offering makeup services. She started with a few accessories gifted by a friend and 20,000 Rwandan francs she'd had at that time. Now, she has reached a commendable level in her work and personal growth. I started doing this just because I liked wearing on my makeup. And after started doing it for my friends, but not as a profession. Some time after, I thought of doing it as a profession. So far, since I started doing this, my standards of living has really improved and on a good level, and even the one of my family. Omurirgo Claudette encourages the youth to rise and pursue their passions, even though it might take starting from scratch. I would really recommend the fellow young people to start from scratch doing what they have passion into because that is how everyone starts and they should not give up because that is where everyone started from and even the powerful people we see nowadays. I also tried using the opportunities I had such as using my phone and going through YouTube videos that gives tutorials and I always made sure I was attentive enough to be able to apply what I learned very well. Okay. Makeup can enhance facial features, even out skin tone, um, conceal imperfections, boost confidence and self-esteem, and uh, makes you feel even more um, uh, beautiful, confident, and um, yeah, I think that's all. In relation with how she learned make doing makeup, Claudette says that she tried using the opportunities she had using YouTube tutorials and also making sure that she is attentive enough while she was learning.
Enora Gladys, RTV News. To health matters, the World Health Organization has declared the Mpox outbreak in DR Congo and elsewhere in Africa as a global emergency, with cases confirmed among children and adults in more than a dozen countries and new form of virus are spreading. Earlier this week, the Africa Centers for Diseases Control and Prevention, Africa CDC, announced that the Mpox outbreak were a public emergency with a more than 500 deaths and called for international help to stop the virus spread. The virus, which can cause lesions across the whole body, has spread to other African countries, including Burundi, Central African Republic, Kenya, and Rwanda. The World Health Organization Director General, Dr. Tedros Adenom Ghebreyesus, called for global coordinated efforts to deal with the outbreak. I announced that I was convening an emergency committee under the international health regulations to evaluate the upsurge of MPOX in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and other countries in Africa. Today, the emergency committee met and advised me that in its view, the situation constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. The detection and rapid spread of a new clade of MPOX in Eastern DRC its detection in neighboring countries that had not previously reported MPOX and the potential for further spread within Africa and beyond is very worrying. In addition to other outbreaks of other clades of MPOX in other parts of Africa, it's clear that a coordinated international response is essential to stop these outbreaks and save lives. The Africa CDC have previously said that Mpox, also known as monkeypox, has been detected in 13 countries uh, this year and that more than 96% of all cases and deaths are in the DR Congo. Cases are up to 160% and deaths are up to 19% compared to uh, the same period last year. So far, there have been more than 14,000 cases and 524 deaths. And viewers' report brings us to the end of tonight's edition. On behalf of the entire news production, as well as the technical team that made it happen, many thanks for being with us. And up until next time, stay safe and have a good night. Goodbye.